Hey, what's up guys, Sir Amanon here, and welcome back to another episode of Road to 1000 Dueling McGrading. So this time I'm going to be on Rocket Orchest, uh, and going to be playing against Dino today. So first off, I just want to mention that since we did manage to hit the goal of 150 likes on the Rocket Orchest deck profile, I will be going ahead and making a combo tutorial later this week sometime after I get it all you know, finalized and put together and all that good stuff. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. And also, uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below of the new overlay. I got a couple of comments asking for me to put the gameplay more in the center of the screen, so I'm just going to be giving this a bit of a test run. And so far, I think it looks pretty decent, but just uh, definitely uh, let me know what your thoughts are on that. But we're just going to go ahead and get started here without further ado. Uh, we're going to win the RPS here, which is pretty good. Uh, the build in this video or in this match is pretty similar. I think it's almost exactly the same, if not exactly the same as my deck profile. But we are going to opt to go first. Our opener contains Girisu, Orcus Nightmare, uh, Gizmek, Valor, as well as Nib. So not a fantastic hand. We don't have any of our Dragon Engine, which is kind of the heart and soul of the deck to just facilitate the Orcus package. So it's pretty unfortunate that we don't have like very meaningful extenders. So our hand is very, very vulnerable. But luckily our opponent didn't open any hand traps. Uh, he opens Extravagance, Tactics, uh, Red Ace Black Dragon, Red Ace Fusion, and Double Evolution Pill. So just going to spoil a little bit of this game. I actually have no idea that he's on Dino for the entirety of game one. But we're going to start off with Girisu, of course. We're going to send a copy of Orcus Nightmare to Grave, and then use Girisu's other effect to uh, put tokens on both fields, then turn our token into Link Rebo, then use Nightmare to send Wand, uh, targeting either of them didn't really matter, of course. We're going to Wand bring back the Nightmare, and then go for a copy of Galatea. We're going to go ahead and use Galatea to shuffle back the wand to set a copy of Babel and then activate it. Uh, then we overlay for Dengirisu and then send away the token and just go for IP. So obviously this is a much lower ceiling than what other decks can do with just Girisu because just Girisu can do a lot of like different combos based on how you build your deck. Like you can utilize Lib setups, you can utilize Rusty setups based on if you want to commit to cards like Link Cross. But in this build, we're not trying to really do that much. Uh, it is still effectively a plus one, and it gets you two disruptions. So it's very efficient still. The difference just is that you either are going to be able to increase your ceiling via the Dragon Engine, which we unfortunately didn't go into because we didn't draw any of it, or you just have room for hand traps, which we do have. Uh, so that's the idea. If you're not drawing like your super broken cards, you're going to be drawing hand traps uh, instead of bricks, which is nice. So we're going to be passing on that. Our opponent draws a Gamma for turn, so it's nice that we didn't have to contend with that. Uh, they're going to go ahead and lead with a copy of Pot of Extravagance, Spanish 6, and then draw a copy of Archosaur and another Pot of Extravagance. So clearly they are uh, not going to be playing Dino this game. Um, they banished a copy of Dragoon, uh, and they are going to summon another one, so that means that tells us that we're, they're on multiple Dragoon. But yeah, he's just going to go ahead and use a copy of Red Ice Fusion. I don't, feel, I don't have, like that's a good of a way to deal with it because I didn't use Nightmare preemptively. Uh, which you could argue that I maybe should have done because what I mean I'm gonna be sending symbol regardless. Especially because I already drew the Gizmic. So yeah maybe should have used Nightmare and like standby face to target the IP or something. But wanted to wait. Cause if I had symbol and grave at this point I could like chain the symbol and then to the Vedice Fusion, and then bring out Ding, and then that would have actually put me in a better spot, as I'm about to explain here. So he goes ahead and fuses for the Red Ice Dark Dragoon, and then I'm thinking on summon here before he actually goes to use the effect, but I go ahead and use the Nightmare to target the IP to send Symbol, of course, like I was saying. And he's thinking here, he's thinking of Resolution, and then he has nothing else. So I decided to activate Symbol, and then I'm targeting my Dingirisu. My thought process is I'm hoping that he lets the Symbol resolve, and then just negates the Ding. That way I can go ahead and chain IP and then chain Gizmic to hopefully make something like a Zero Boros that I just can't uh, clear, because IP will protect it from destruction. And then the Banish from Gizmic will put the Zero Boros over the uh, Dark Dragoon, which would be ultimately good, obviously. And that's why I was saying earlier that if I preemptively use this Nightmare to send Symbol, then I would have resulted in that outcome, because right now Ding would be on field, and he'd be essentially forced to negate it. Uh, and then I would just go channeling 3 uh, Mascarena, channeling 4 Gizmek. So that's the play that I should have done if I had kind of thought about it. But again, I wasn't really like aware that he was going to just you know rip a Red Ice Fusion. But yeah, he is going to negate the symbol itself, so obviously none of that's going to happen. And then he's going to continue on and then use Dragoon to pop my Mascarena. I decided to let it go through because there's nothing that I can reasonably IP into. 
Um, even if I was playing Long Yusu, which I am not, uh, he summoned it to the one zone that doesn't lose to Long Yusu. Um, shouts to the heater in the background, sorry about that. But Triple Tactics Talent is going to come down next, and he's going to actually take a look at my hand and rip the Orcus Nightmare from it. Uh, so now he has kind of full knowledge of what I'm working with, and I am out of my Orcus package, so I need to top deck something pretty impactful uh, against Dragoon, which is going to be very tough. But he's going to go battle phase and hit for 3k here, nothing to say about that. And then he's just going to pass turn. During the end phase, I'm going to use Gizmic because this is a window where he doesn't have Dragoon negation life, so I just need to put a body on the board because Zero Boar still is a viable out just so I can, you know, beat over it if I can somehow manage to get there. But that is like the only reasonable avenue that I have, other than just Ding, of course. For turn, I get a copy of Chaos Space, which is decent. Uh, but unfortunately, like I mentioned before, he has full hand knowledge now because of tactics, so uh, when I activate this Chaos Space, he knows that that's like the only real play that I'm working with. Because here I can actually use the Baby Chaos Dragons as well as a normal Summon Veiler to ladder up into Zero Boris that way. But he obviously is not going to let that happen and just use the Dragoon to negate that. And with me kind of just running out of plays here, I just decided to pack it up for Game 2. And so for Game 2, I don't know what I'm playing against, but I decided to make him go first because I realized that um, maybe he's on like a hand trap deck, maybe he's on a deck that is like just a lot of like non-engine cards and just playing like a very small, you know, like, I'm not really, again, I'm, I have no idea what he's playing, but what I do know is that from that experience, the Orca setup probably isn't going to be enough to uh, put in work by itself, so I just decided to go second and see if I could like break a board. Maybe not the right choice, but that's kind of just what my thought process was at the time. Uh, he's going to use Extravagance. His opener is Extravagance, Lost World, Lightning Storm, uh, Gamma, and Lancia. What's one of the other things about Orcus in this uh, metagame is that people are already playing Lancia for Dino. So yeah, playing into one of the most powerful side deck cards is not the greatest thing, but it is what it is. Also, our hand, I didn't mention our hand, but you know, we opened Nightmare, Gyusu, Gizmek, again, the same three cards. We opened a Didi Crow and a Symbol Skeleton. Yeah, really hate not seeing any of the Dragon cards. It really is what makes the deck run. But yeah, he's going to pick up another Lightning Storm and an Overraptor, so he's going to go for Lost World and Overraptor. Netting himself a token, or netting a token to my field and then grabbing himself a Miscellaneousaurus. He's going to use Miscellaneousaurus and then going to immediately Crow it, of course. Um, yeah, he didn't see that I Crowed. That's why like, he went to use the Overraptor to target the token, but yeah, I had Crow there. And he's forced to pass here. Uh, we draw a Ravine, which is very, very good. It's very needed. Uh, he's going to shotgun the Lancia. And this is al also another strength of the Dragon Package, is that uh, even when your Orcus Engine gets completely shut off by something like Lancia, you have your Dragons to actually play at least. So that's pretty good. Uh, I'm going to turn the Link token, or not the Link token, the Lost World token into Link Rebo. And then go for a Dragon Ravine. Uh, I decided to pitch the Gizmic, which I think even though I was under Lancey, I probably should have sent the Nightmare instead, because that's going to be harder to get out of my hand later, since I'm going to be getting rid of this Ravine anyway for a Brute Sector. So since this Gizmic obviously can still be used in hand, uh, I should have just put the Graveyard setup in the Grave for the following turn, because there's very low chance of OTKing this turn. So I need to think a little bit farther ahead than that. But I'm going to send Router off of the Ravine and add Tracer. And of course, since you know my Orca stuff is just completely off, I am just going to go for the Tracer. Admittedly, it doesn't hurt that bad that I didn't go for Nightmare over the Gizmek because I drew Gearsu, so that's my next turn's normal summon anyways, but uh, just small things to think about. Can I normal Tracer, go into the Striker Dragon, and then go into a copy of Boot Sector launch. Uh, then I'm going to use the Striker Dragon to pop the Link Freebo and add Tracer back to hand. Uh, here I go for... The reason I do that, by the way, instead of popping the Striker Dragon, is I want to make sure to vacate my extra monster zone, just in case I want to go for a seal play. Um, because this, this was the time I was testing seal. So here I go for Boot Sector to go summon Tracy from hand, and then use Tracy to pop the Boot Sector... Or sorry, pop the uh, Striker Dragon. Yeah, because I have no re real reason to go for uh, Chaos Ruler, since I already committed to my normal, and... I don't have my Orcus engine on right now, of course, with the uh, Lancia in play. So I actually just go and pop the Striker instead. That way I can keep the Boot Sector for further follow-up if I need to. I just go into Savage, and I know this is like not that strong, but it's the best you can do against Lancia. 
Uh, go ahead and attack over the Overraptor for 1200 since uh, it's on 35 and then this is reducing it by 5. Nice pass turn, he draws a copy of Tactics Talent. And he's forced to pass, he can't use Lightning Storm because of the Lost World on field, which is nice. And from here, I am able to now fully pop off. Go normal with the Gear Suit and send a copy of nothing because he's just going to scoop. But yeah, that was definitely, you could tell that that was going to be the full sort of combo there. I had a way to access Wand as well as I would have Gizmic Engrave and I could cast space away the Nightmare. So I would have really had the entire entirety of my plan and he didn't even see the extent of it. But once he saw the Gear Suit, he knew even that would have been enough, like chaos space aside. So moving on to game number three here, he's of course going to, not maybe not of course, but he is going to choose to go first again. So his opener is going to be Overraptor, Lancia, Terraforming, Red Ice Fusion, and uh, Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. So he has the choice between going for uh, Dragoon and going for Overraptor. And our opening hand is DD Crow, Quick Launch, Recharge, and Quick Launch Tracer. You don't want to see this where you draw Quick Launch and you draw two of your rockets, because that's that just means your quick launches become a lot less effective. Um, generally, drawing recharger is also not that great, but not especially not when you draw you know three of your other rocket cards. So you can see none of our hands were even that amazing, but the ability to play hand traps, we open a hand trap every time. Like the ability to play hand traps is really really nice that other Orcus builds really can't afford to play. Uh, he's going to go for terraforming to add a copy of Lost World. So obviously he's going for over after this turn. He's going to go over Raptor and Lost World, uh, and obviously I think I think he made the right choice because uh, like I'm playing a Dingirsu deck, so like that's a very very easy way to out Dragoon. Even though I struggled to do it game one, uh, in theory it should be a lot easier to do than uh, what that match showcased. But he's going to give me a token off Lost World and add Miscellaneous Source off the Over Raptor. This is very much deja vu from game one because I'm just going to immediately DD Crow again, and he's forced to pass again. And then standby, he's going to Lancey on me again. <laughs> so it's literally the exact same sequence of things that happened last game, which is uh, pretty funny. Uh, we draw Chaos Space, which is fine enough because, I mean, we're already like full in on our dragon stuff. Uh, it's not live with Lancia, but, I mean, it it'll be good later, of course. Yeah, this is literally the exact same game as game number one, which is, you know, it's what we call comedy. So we're going to start off with Quick Launch to bring out the Tracer. And then I'm going to go for Link Rebo again, and then go for Striker Dragon, and then use that to add a copy of Boot Sector. This literally is just the exact same game as game one. Uh, we're going to use Striker Dragon to pop the Link Rebo, and then add back Tracer. Uh, again, I just want to make sure that I have a seal line if I need to. I'm uh, going to go, go ahead and use the Boot Sector to summon out two from hand. And then I'm just going to straight up go into seal and then use the other quick launch to grab Tracer. The reason I use this, even though I haven't used my normal summon at all, is I just want to make sure that Chaos Space is alive next turn if I, if we get to that point, which it's looking pretty likely. Uh, we're going to go ahead and... Uh, oh yeah, he asks me to take this back because he thought I used Tracer effect, but I didn't use it. So he thought like the seal activation, or sorry, summon was not legal, but I never used Tracer. I just had so many tracers. I had double quick launch and another hard drawn tracer. So, yo. Uh, we're going to use. And a hard drawn recharger. Uh, we're going to use the Savage, of course, to equip Striker Dragon. And then just go ahead and go to battle phase. Hit for 12. Uh, this time I feel a little bit better because we have Seal on top of it. Uh, it does suck that Seal can't really float into anything that good. Which, again, if you watch my deck profile, it was something I was considering playing with stuff like Red MD or Brotar or things of that nature. But ultimately, they just didn't synergize with the rest of the deck well enough. Uh, he draws a copy of Gamma. And then his only real play is Red Ice Fusion. So he is going to fire that off. Uh, I'm going to chain the Savage. Uh, he's going to attempt to Gamma, but he can't Gamma under Red Ice Fusion. Uh, it's the same reasoning behind like duality and Gamma. So yeah, he's just going to go ahead and scoop there, and that is that. So uh, neither of us opened very, very well, I would say, in any of those games. Um, but also you can attest to the fact that I had DD Crow both times, and then the first game, it was just a matter of me not preempting the Nightmare to be able to deal with the Red Ice Fusion for the uh, Dragoon. Um, if I had preempted Nightmare, I actually could have walked away with it, but uh, that is a lesson to be learned. Probably should just shotgun it. There's not really any harm in it, because if they're going to disrupt you, they're going to disrupt you anyway. Um, 
I, also, to be fair, I guess in game number one, he did have the sixth card, Gamma, but then he would have given up his Red Ice Fusion play. Um, so, I mean, there's like a lot of other variables that maybe could have changed the outcome of that game, but it was probably not very likely. But in most cases, I think Shotgun and the Nightmare in that game one scenario is fine. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like as well as any thoughts or your feedback in the comments. Subscribe for more competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! content. If you want to, you can follow me on Discord, Twitter, or Twitch. All the links in the description, as always. And until next time, I'll catch you in the next video. See you guys!